Papa Yaga. Got him. All right. So, you know, we want to be able to see Christ in everything that we do. And we want to see Christ littered all throughout the scriptures because he is there, literally. Um, one thing we want to always keep in mind that Jesus Christ did not come into existence when he was born from the womb of Mary. Jesus always existed. Before there was a beginning, there was Christ. Always. And so we never want to forget that Jesus has always been around since day one. Okay. Let's get into the list. If my, there we go. That's definitely not a part of it. All right, so we're starting with our icebreakers. Question number one, any, many, my, you know what? Let's go with the first person who was on today, Rosie. Here is the question. Question number one is, who created God and where did he come from? No one created God. He was just, he already existed. I think. <laughs> <laughs> nope, you got it. You got it. You are 100% correct. Nobody created God. He always existed from the very, very beginning. Okay. Um, we spoke a few lessons back about uh, a group of people called the Mormons. And um, the Mormons are actually uh, kind of frightening with their teachings and their doctrines. Um, one thing in particular. Uh, that we see that the Mormons say is that they say that Jesus was a created being. And they also say that he wasn't, he didn't always exist. They say that his father um, existed on another planet before he came to this universe and came to the earth. And they say that because he kept the 10 commandments so good when his father Elohim died on the other planet, he was resurrected with a couple of his wives and that he was granted godhood because he kept the 10 commandments so great and he was able to come here and the first thing he that he did was have jesus um as his son and through christ created everything that there was that's a very dangerous teaching um and it's false and it's something that comes straight from satan um we want to ensure that we understand what God has said about himself, okay? He's never been created. He's always existed, okay? So let's move forward. Good answer. Question number two. Chanel left. I don't know what happened. She lost the connection. So we're going to go with Sherelle. Ah, here's the question. Question number two. What was God doing before the heavens and the earth were created? To be honest, I'm not completely sure. Maybe you know uh, what? Oh, go ahead. I was about to say maybe drawing up plans for, um, you know what what he wanted to do. I don't know. I'm not sure. <laughs> you know what? Nobody knows. That's the perfect answer. What's up, Drew? <laughs> That's the perfect answer. Nobody knows. We don't know what God was doing before He created the heavens and the earth. But we just know that he existed because he's God. These questions are pointed um, intentionally to make us think a little bit more and wonder. Um, <laughs> one day we'll know what God was doing before then when we see him face to face. But if the scripture don't say, we don't know. And as Christians, one thing that we cannot be afraid to say is that we don't know. Right? God doesn't reveal everything. He doesn't. But he reveals what we do need to know. And that's what's important. Okay? Good answer. Jay Hall, you up next. Here's the question. How does the Big Bang Theory measure up against the biblical account of creation? It doesn't measure up. I don't even know why they even address the Big Bang Theory. I don't even know why they talk about it. But, you know, that's that science stuff. So, but... Because, I mean, God created the heavens and the earth. And, you know, the Bible talks about it. The Big Bang Theory talking about it's just the Big Bang and then everything happened. Okay. Yeah. No, it don't happen like that. <laughs> you are correct, sir. 
you know, it's amazing. I had a conversation uh, with a group of coworkers last week, man. And um, it was amazing to actually come across somebody who truly, with their whole heart, believe in the Big Bang Theory. And so I just kept it simple. I said, okay, well, where did the ingredients for the Big Bang come from? Um, and they couldn't answer the question. They were just like, it just appeared, but out of where? You know, um, <laughs> it, with all these chemicals and stuff, remember science is uh, stuff that people can understand through observation. So if you can't observe it, then it's just a theory, right? Um, speaking scientifically. And so she couldn't answer the question. It was just like, you gotta go back and you gotta really think. Um, there has to be something that exists that is greater, right? Whether you want to acknowledge God or not, there has to be something to exist. There's too much order to everything that we know of in this life for there not to be an intelligent designer behind it all. And a person who created it with the utmost intelligence that no one can supersede or uh, ever know more than is that of the one and true living God. But you're right. Um, it does not measure up. Um, your dad says all the time, the Bible is the ruler. And so when someone comes with us to us with a uh, theory or a thought, all we have to do is just go to the ruler and measure it out to see if this really what it is and what it's not. And if the word of God does not support it, that ain't what it is. Okay. All right. Drew, my man, I see you driving. Can you hear me good? Oh, no, I just went into get some quiet. Peace and quiet in the truck. <laughs> okay. Well, I got a question for you. This is question number four. This is the last one, okay? Uh, <laughs> Why I do like you think God thought it was important for man to know how the heavens and the earth began? Hmm. Why do I think? Um, faith, knowledge. Okay, uh, we'll take both of those. Let me see. Hmm. I think that's all I got for now. <laughs> right, look, but you know what? Those answers weren't wrong, right? You know, yeah. we need to have knowledge about what happened because, yeah, okay. right? Unfortunately, us as men, we'll mess some stuff up, we'll make some stuff up. And the thing that's crazy, too, is if we hear it sure. enough times, a lot of us will start to believe what do we hear. That's why the mm -hmm. media is so dangerous and what they put out there, because they can just spew out anything and it, it not be true. But because you heard it over and over again, you, you right. just think that it is true. Right. Um, <clears throat> God had a, a particular um, desire for the children of Israel. So the person who wrote the first five books of the Bible was Moses. God had given him, um, he had revealed to him these particular things, especially in Genesis, because Genesis was way before Moses' time, but God revealed that to him, and he put it together, and it was important for Israel to know, because they, for 400 years, were slaves in Egypt, and so they believed a lot of the Egyptian type stuff that was going on, because that's all they knew for the longest time, and God said, I need to set the record straight and let them know, so he put it together. Let Moses know. So now we all know what happened and how everything began. All right. Good answer. Good answer. All right. So let's actually get into the lesson, people. Bam. All right. So we are looking at the creation account. And I put together just like a little, a quick little chart about what happened from day one to day six. Okay. Um, day one, God created light. Day two. He created the expanse in heaven. Day three, he created the dry land and vegetation. Day four, the sun, the moon, the planets and the stars. Day five, the birds, the fish and the sea creatures. And day six, man, animals and bugs. Okay, so um, this is our layout for what we're gonna do and what we're gonna read today. And uh, we're gonna stop, I believe at day four. Uh, but we'll see. Let's keep on pushing. Bam. I remember anytime if y'all got questions, highlight let your boy. All right. So I do have a question. Chapter... Okay, go ahead. And this is just something I was asked a long time ago, and I never quite got clarity on it. Trying to do my own research. But um how the days are broken down, 
isn't there some place in the Bible where it says that um, a day in the Lord is like a thousand years? Correct. And does that apply here or are we just strictly talking in a week's time? Yes, we're strictly speaking in a week time. And so okay. when you're looking at that particular verse, it's speaking about something different. It's given more so like an analogy uh, about the patience of God, the waiting of God, the time of God. Um, it's like, <laughs> because he lives in eternity, right? And so like, he's not affected by time as we are, you know? Can you imagine what it would be like for us to live a thousand years? Right. <laughs> but for the Lord, a thousand years is just like one day because he sits outside of eternity and he's not affected by time as we are. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's what he was speaking about when he was talking about that in particular. Um, but yeah, this is, the, I had the same question for a while pertaining to this. I was like, man, is this really like 24 hours? But it really is. And as we go through the lesson, you'll, you'll see more about how um, even when God said, let there be, there was an order to everything that transpired when he said let there be um let's read the scriptures and we'll find out i'll show you thank you all right genesis 1 1 through 5 in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth and the earth was a formless and desolate emptiness and darkness was over the surface of the deep and the spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning one day. something we've seen before right but there's more to it check it there's some things that we want to notice when you first open up the scriptures and look at genesis chapter one the first thing it says is in the beginning god bam right the first thing that we have on our list is there is no attempt to convince you that god is real have you noticed that have you ever seen anything in the scriptures that just tries to explain thoroughly the existence of God? You can't. God specifically just put it out there. Why? Because God has built something in all of us to know that there is a God that exists. When you go to different tribes and different nations and different places, right, on different parts of the world, they always worship in something. They always have some type of religion. They have something that they hold in high esteem, right? Because there is a built-in understanding that there is something greater than us. The reason why them and many others don't know is simply because they haven't been introduced to God. Why is it they haven't been introduced to God? It's because we're separated from God because of sin, period, right? But that very thing that God has still instilled in us is still there. And so... That's why it's so important for us as believers to go and to witness so that we can share the good news of the gospel with men who have an innate desire to worship God without knowing who that real God is. When we introduce Christ uh, to the people who have a desire to worship God, it can make a difference in their lives because they can actually choose Christ and put everything else down. OK, so again, there's no attempt to convince you that God is real. God has the ability to create simply by speaking. OK, and in parentheses, I put that is exclusively his right. OK, he is the only person in eternity or in time who can speak and it has to happen. OK. I know many of you guys may be familiar with the, the word faith movement, where they say you can speak whatever you want into existence. If you, if you say it, then it's got to happen. But that's wrong, right? If we could speak things into existence, if we could speak and things had to happen, why do we need God? <laughs> why do we need God? 
there is a huge and major distinct difference between God and man. And we have to always understand who we are and we have to grow in our understanding of who he is so that we'll never make the mistake and think that everything that God does, we can do. That's false and it's dangerous, right? We don't want to have the mindset of Satan. Satan wanted to be God, okay? That's why he lost his position in heaven because he wanted to be God. We're supposed to want to be like him but never ever wanting to take his place or be him. That's a dangerous thing, okay? Then here's a small little fact that many of us may not know. Day and night is not determined by the rise and going down of the sun or the moon. Wait, what? Let's go back and look at the verse, okay? Number two, and the earth was, was a formless and desolate emptiness and darkness was over the surface of the deep. So we're looking at the description of what the earth looks like, okay? Before the Lord formed it into the shape that it was, what God is revealing here is, this is God. God is an eyewitness to the account because he was there when he created everything. And so God is telling us <laughs> that the earth was a formless and desolate emptiness and darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. So there's an earth here, but there, there it has no, no dry land. It has uh, no cities, no towns, no mountains, no hills, no valleys, no bugs, no creatures. There is nothing but the earth that has no form. And there's darkness everywhere, right? But there is something that is here, and that's water. I can't explain it. I don't know when Christ first put water in this place, but it was water here, right? <laughs> That's amazing, okay? So you got the earth that has no form, no shape, okay? Then you have this water that's here and the Lord God is hovering over the waters, okay? And then we see that there's darkness, but verse three says something. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good and God separated the light from the darkness. How do you do that? How do you separate light from darkness? I don't understand that concept. <laughs> and truth be told, neither do you, right? It, you can't even hold light or darkness in your hands. But God is so cold, not only did he create it by simply saying, let there be, but God is so cold that he took light and he separated it from darkness, right? <laughs> if there's no light and there's no darkness, Drew, what is there? Hmm. Who knows? Not <laughs> but, but he separated the two. Now, don't get it twisted, okay? When he's saying that he created light, God is not saying, this is not him saying he created the sun. This is not the sun that we're speaking about, okay? And this is not the moon. Simply put, God created light. There is a light without sun, okay? This is what's happening here. And as a matter of fact, when we get to the new earth, there will be no sun either. The only thing that will light all of the new earth will be the glory of God. That's it. It won't be no more sun no more. I don't even know if there'll be a moon. Because it won't be no nighttime there. It'll always be light everywhere. All right. That's insane. But that's that's in Revelation later on. All right. All right. Now we we in the very beginning and we're looking at what God has orchestrated. Uh, Any questions or thoughts so far? No. Yeah. Okay. Let's keep it moving. Bam. Rosie, you still with me? <laughs> yes. Sorry. Okay. I couldn't unmute it. <laughs> You're good. I'm just messing with you. All right. So let's look at something here again. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Okay. G-O-D. Skip one, skip two. A glance into the Hebrew text. Okay. So just so y'all know, the Old Testament is written in Hebrew. Okay. And so when we study the Bible, oftentimes we do something called word study so we can see uh, what this particular word really meant when the writer was writing what they were writing. 
And so when Moses was writing this, the word that he used for God was Elohim, okay? The word God in Genesis 1 and 1 derives from the Hebrew word Elohim, okay? And check this out. The word Elohim itself is plural. It means supreme ones, literally. So when we look at the scripture in English, it says G-O-D, God, right? When you look at it in this original writing, it says Elohim, which is plural, which means more than one. Now, this is where you get into some deep stuff, okay? We know that there is only one God, but God expresses himself through three individuals, God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They're all three different individuals, three different people who all exist at the same time, right? Some people teach something called modalism, and modalism is where they say, well, there's God, and at one time, he operates as God the Father, and then when it's necessary, he changes to God the Son, who is Jesus Christ, and then he also changes to the Holy Spirit when it's necessary, but that's not biblical. That's not right. The Bible specifically makes it plain that they all three are God, but there's only one God, okay? Nobody can explain that to you, okay? When people say, well, that means it's kind of like um, ice and, and gas and water. Nope, that's wrong. <laughs> that's dead wrong. That's not how we explain it, okay? It's different. God is who he says he is. He, he, he's, again, he expresses himself through three individuals, God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit, okay? This is what's happening. So we're going to take it a little bit deeper when we look at the supreme ones. Okay. Bam. Q&A. What does John 1, 1 through 3 say? And let's see. Let's pick on Jonathan again, just because that's my boy. And I love him, man. I love him like a sister. All right? I'll, go, <laughs> I'll go on his behalf. Um, in the beginning was the word, and the word was God. Word was with God. The same was in the beginning with God. I'm oh, sorry. My my Thank Bible. You. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> <amazing>. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Okay. You know what happened? Well, I, it it got out of my um. It's okay. No sweat. Check it. Okay. In the it beginning, uh -huh. in the beginning was the word, and the word was, and the word was with God. In the beginning was the word, sorry. And the word was with God and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him and without him, nothing was made that was made. In him was life and the life was the light of men. Sorry, I waited too far. No, 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 it's fine. That's fine, you're good. Check it. <laughs> in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Hold on one second. Let me see what happened to my, what you call it? My Zoom Zoom, because you can't see me no more. Let me bring it back. Bam. Okay. There we go. Okay, you can see me loud and clear. Well, you know, hear me loud and clear. All right. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. Okay, so so we got two things in the beginning, right? We're talking about the same beginning in Genesis way over here, right? In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God, okay? All things came into being through him and apart from him, not even one thing came into being that has come into being, okay? So when we go back, we see something, right? In the beginning, what? God created the heavens and the earth. So basically, when we look at Genesis chapter one, we see seeing that God wasn't alone. He was with somebody else. That's why we say the word Elohim, right? But then John says, hey, look, that other person that was with God, that was God, that created everything is the word. The word, okay? It says in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. Okay, and then all things came into being through him and apart from him, not even one thing came into being that has come into being. 
Why is that? Because verse four says, I'm glad that you read that extra. In him was a life, right? And the life was the light of mankind. So we ain't even got the mankind yet, all right? <laughs> all we got in him was a life. We can just stop right there, okay? Now check it. We're speaking about the word. And we're speaking about God in the beginning of Genesis 1. Then we fold over one page one time. Bam. John 1 and 14 says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we saw his glory, glory as of the only son from the father, full of grace and truth. Okay. So the word, John, the disciple said, I've seen the word in the flesh. That, that same word that was with God and that was God and that is God and created everything, that same God came down in the flesh and he dwelt among us. And we saw his glory, glory as of the only son from the father, full of grace and truth. They're speaking about Jesus Christ, right? Jesus in the beginning said, let there be light. And guess what? It was light. And Jesus is so cold that Jesus took light that he created and spoke into existence and he got darkness and he separated the two, right? <laughs> That's cold, man. That's cold. So that was Jesus who was hovering above the waters of the earth that had no shape or no form, right? It was Jesus. Man, that's a powerful testimony, right? But then we want to look again at the fact that we're looking at the supreme ones, right? So we, we're we going to fast forward just to one verse real quick, and that's Genesis 1 and 26. And it says, then God said, let us make mankind in our image according to our likeness and let them rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every crawling thing that crawls on the earth right so we're looking at the fact that god is saying let us right this is in the beginning before there was another human he said then god said let us Again, this is your backup. This is your co-signing to allow you to know that what we're seeing here, the very beginning, God, which is Elohim, which means the supreme ones, right? You have the Father, you have the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All three of them are present at the moment of creation, okay? Any questions or thoughts so far? Good, good. Got a clear understanding? Ah, right, let's keep pressing then. Bam. Going to the next verses in Genesis. Genesis 1, verses 6 through 8. Then God said, let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. Okay, wait, what? Let's, let's read that again. Then God said, let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. Now, remember, the only thing that was here is darkness, right? And there's water here on a, a earth that has no form, no shape. It's just, it's just here. It's, just, it's, it's nothing complete or whole, right? That's it. So God said, let's create something called an expanse. God made the expanse and separated the waters that were below the expanse from the waters that were above the expanse. And it was so. I'm going to blow your mind with something, okay? God called the expanse heaven. And there was evening and there was morning a second day. What is he talking about? Waters from the waters and, and expanse. What is he talking about? And the expanse is called heaven. What you... All right, well, I guess we need to just go a little further to find out what's going on. Bam! All right, so here's a, an image to kind of give us a better idea. Now, remember, when God was there, let's just see God here, right? I see the mouse moving. Okay, so then, remember, God is here, and there's darkness everywhere, right? And then God said, let there be light, and then, bam, that was light, right? That's your Big Bang Theory right there. All right, so then, bam, that was light. <laughs> so light is in existence and then god is so cold he put light and darkness he separated the two right 
That was day one. But then day two, he comes back. Now, remember, the earth has no form. It's not a circle. It's not a square. It has no form. It has no shape. All there is is water here. And the earth exists, but it has no definite shape or form which is mind boggling. You can't even think about that, okay? So nevertheless, we're here. And then God is so cold, he does something. He sees that there's nothing but water, darkness and light. And he says, let there be an expanse. Or depending on your version, it may say firmament, okay? Expanse divides the waters above the earth. What? Here's something that you do not know. On the earth, there's water, right? You know that. But when you go into, up into outer space, right? We have rockets that go up into outer space. When they go up into outer space, you don't see any water up there. It's just a sky, right? They might go through some clouds, but after that, they leave the atmosphere and then they go into outer space. Have you guys ever seen water in outer space? No, you hadn't. You see stars, you see the moon, you see planets and stuff, but you don't never see no water out there, right? It's a reason why. Let's keep looking. Bam. Expanse and the separation of waters. The universe as we know it is beyond humans capability to measure. We have no idea how big the universe is, how many galaxies there are, we have no way to number the stars and we do not know how many planets or moons make up every inch of the entire solar system. Yeah, God does. In his infinite wisdom, he spoke and everything that blows our mind in the universe came from the mind of God. What many people do not know is that somewhere above the universe is enough water to drown the entirety of creation. There is so much water that God created the sky to separate the water that is currently above the universe from the water that is on earth. One of the purposes of the expanse slash sky is to separate what we see from what we cannot see. God is truly amazing so think about this look at this in your heart and your mind right let's look at what the bible says again then god said let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters remember before the earth was formed there was water everywhere and let it separate the waters from the water so there's water on the earth we know that we can look and we can see there's water on the earth everywhere but then when we go to outer space there's no water there is a layer above space that no man will ever be able to get to, no matter how sophisticated the rocket or ship is. And up there is nothing but water, right? And the reason why the universe exists as it does is because God is separating that water up there from the water that's on the earth, right? On top of the universe is water. That, that's crazy. Look at what the scripture says again. Then God said, let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters and let it separate the waters from the waters. God made the expanse, which is the sky. God created the sky and separated the waters that were below the expanse from the waters that were above the expanse. And it was so. God called the expanse heaven and there was evening and there was morning a second day. So here is the question. On day two, God made outer space, okay? On day two, God made outer space. So what was, where was God before there was outer space? <laughs> well, what is the name of that area, right? <laughs> that, that existed before God said, here's outer space. Where was God? How could the earth even be here if there was no outer space? This is what we're looking at as we're studying the scripture, right? It's powerful, man. Again, the expanse divides the waters above the earth uh, from the waters that are above the earth. And check this, right? 
expanse and the separation of waters. Actually, we already did this already. Bam. Q&A. Let's look at this. Okay. What does 2 Corinthians 12, 1 through 4 say? When you find it, let me know. Um, it is doubtless not profitable for me to boast. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in the body I do not know or whether out of the body I do not know, God knows such a one was caught up to the third heaven. Stop. And okay. Caught up where? Caught caught up to the third heaven. What is that? Uh you want me to keep reading? <laughs> no, <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. You, you can read your full. <laughs> and I know such a man. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows how he was caught up into paradise and heard inexpressible words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. Hmm. So I'm guessing the third heaven is paradise? Correct. It is the place where God the Father and the Son reside. It's the heaven that we want to go to. Okay? Good answer. Good observation. Check it. Okay? The expanse is heaven. Remember, God said, let there be an expanse, right? To divide the water from below, from the water that is above. So the first heaven is where we live, okay? And we look up in the sky, we see the birds in the sky, we see the clouds, those that will be considered the heavens, the sky, okay? That's part of the firmament. But then when you go up higher, bam. There's a second heaven, outer space, the stars, the planets, the moon, right? And then the third heaven is where God resides. So God created these things. Now, this was already in existence, the third heaven where God resides. That already existed before. Then God came, stepped out of eternity, stepped into time, and he created light. After he created light, he separated the waters with the expanse that he made here, okay, the sky. So just think about this, right? We think about how there is the sky here that we see. And we know if we go a little bit higher, bam, we go into outer space. But guess what? If you go higher than outer space, this is not what you're going to see. There's going to be water there, okay? And that's what uh god is getting across to us the third heaven is a spiritual place right um and when i say spiritual i don't mean like it's a place where we have tails and we're ghosts no we have bodies just like we have here but they are without seeing um when we have that their body they can enter into heaven okay but it's it's governed by the spirit of god so that's what i say when i mean it's a spiritual place um but we can't access it like we can access uh, the first two heavens, not, not in this form. We, to get to that place, you got to die. <laughs> okay. That's the only way you, you got to die in order to reach that place. But God has revealed something magnificent to us that we did not know um, that exists. Many people will hear this and be like, man, it ain't no water. It ain't nothing higher than outer space. That's where faith comes in. Right. Remember in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Again, the Bible does not explain God. The Bible simply says he is, and that's it, right? And it is pressed upon your heart because God is so great with his design that <laughs> what the Bible is saying is true because it's God's revealed word to the man that he himself created, okay? Any questions or thoughts so far? How are we looking? Y'all good? I just wanted to make a comment. It's amazing. God sits in heaven. And he's looking through water, he's looking through space, he's looking through the sky between all the clouds, and he can still see us. <laughs> I can't even see my hand if my glasses are off. <laughs> 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 it's, it, it's amazing. Like when I was studying and putting this together, 
I can't tell you how many times I had to just sit back and just do like this and just take it all in. Like, bruh, this is incredibly insane. It speaks to the nature of God, the, the awestruck and amazing nature of God. Like it, it, it is beyond compare. Like <sighs> there is never a time that God never ceases to amaze me. Like it's just, who knew? <laughs> right? who, who knew and man god is just he's words can't even describe he, he's just that good right so again we see there are three types of heavens right we see that that the sky is made right for more than one purpose but one of the main purposes was to separate that water up there from the water that's here on the earth okay and to also illustrate the beauty and magnificence of God. It's mind boggling. Boom. Genesis 1, 9 through 13. Um, then God said, let the waters below the heavens be gathered into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth. And the gathering of the waters he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth sprout vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees on the earth bearing fruit according to their kind with seed in them. And it was so. The earth produced vegetation, plants yielding seed according to their kind and trees bearing fruit with seed in them, according to their kind. And God saw that it was good. Mm. And there was evening and there was morning, a third day. Third. All right. Any questions before I, I move on to the next portion? Good, good. Drew you straight? Yeah, I was just looking at this blue sky outside, though. <laughs> <laughs> Making you wonder a little bit, huh? Yeah. Man, God just said, let there be. That, that's my body. Bam. Genesis 1, 9 through 13. You see all these structures, right? You see this green land. You see the mountains. You see these intricate designs that God has made. And then you look over to the left and you see all of this fruit and vegetables and vegetation. God spoke. And it was there, right? But the thing that's so amazing about God when he speaks and he creates something is, again, built into the command to exist is in order of how to exist, of how it's supposed to function, right? The most faithful thing to God is the things that he creates. It's us that he's created that's not obedient to what he says. But grass will wither, grass will die, grass will come back right uh <laughs> the fruits and, and the vegetables right once they plant it you don't have to teach a, a plant how to come up you don't have to teach a plant to grow it's built in it to do it because mm -hmm. god put that order in it right <laughs> mm -hmm. think about all of the foods and, and the fruit trees and everything that god created where do you think the vitamins and the antioxidants and stuff come from Right? Do you think they just came on their own? No. God has put that into it when he created life. And then inside the seed of the fruit, guess what? That same DNA, that same order, that same thing that it's supposed to do over and over and over and over again, it does because when God spoke and said, let it be, God put the order of it into it. Right? Look, man, fruit doesn't have a brain. <laughs> but it still obeys God. It still <laughs> replicates and does what it's supposed to do. <laughs> right? Think about it. Vegetables don't have a brain. Trees don't have a brain. But they still follow the orders that God has given them because God is so cold when he spoke it into existence, he also put order into it. He put direction into it. And these things will always do what they're supposed to do every time because of who God is. That's a powerful thing to think about. 
again, when we examine this chapter, we're looking primarily at the awesome nature of God. This is what Genesis 1 is. It's more than just revealing the history of, of how the world came together. It's attesting to the power of God. It's attesting to how cold he is. See, think about it. We build computers and video games and stuff, and we got to labor with that thing, right? We got to go in there and we got to do this. We got to do that. We got to make sure it's doing what it's supposed to do. And when it don't, we got to go back and find out what the problem is and then go back and try to fix it again and, and make it to fit and work. And finally, we'd be like, oh, man, we finally did it, right? It takes a team to come together to do stuff like that. God had his team already. God got the hardest score there is. And all they did was step out and said, let that be. And then, bam. It wasn't no mess up. It wasn't no erasing. It wasn't no trying to compile uh, a schematic or nothing. God just said, let that be. And it was. Again, that same God that created everything is the same God that loves you and desires a personal relationship with you and desires to have a, a, a fellowship with you that's like none other. Can you imagine? Can you imagine actually having a real relationship with this God? <laughs> this, this God right here, imagine it. You don't have to imagine it. All you have to do is submit to his lordship, hear the gospel, repent, and trust Christ as your Lord and your Savior. And the moment that you do, you enter into a personal relationship with this same God who spoke and said, let there be. It's a powerful person to, to have on your side, right? It's a powerful person to serve. And if he can do that, he can supply all of your needs, okay? But it also says something about God as well. It speaks about his self-sufficient nature, right? Look, we only able to survive here because of what God himself has provided for us. The food, right? The shelter, all of these things we have to have in order for us to live. But God existed before all of these things existed. He didn't need any of it. Why? Because he is a self-sustaining God. He doesn't need any of that, right? Again, we are tested to who God is. The dry land. God is masterful in his art form. No one compares to how he illustrates the magnificent beauty that he has formed from nothing. God has tactfully creating everything the way that he did for a purpose. He was making a habitable world. <laughs> wow. Da -da -da -da, my phone's gonna die. So we are back. Okay. <laughs> so again, let's go ahead and go back to what we were saying about the dry land, right? God is masterful in his art form. No one compares to how he illustrates the magnificent beauty that he has formed from nothing. God was tactfully creating everything the way that he did for a purpose. He was making a habitable world for the man that he would place on the planet to rule this very thing called earth that he created. Imagine the overwhelming amount of love Jesus has for us. Before he even brought us into this world, he prepared a place for us, a wonderful place with natural foods we will enjoy, constant terrain for us to explore, lights so we can fully see all that he has created for us to see and enjoy. 
He made all of this for us. Just like an expecting mother and father create a room, make changes to their home, paints the baby's room and gives the child a crib and safe haven to live. So God has done for us in these moments of creation, right? You think about that. Um, I know both of you guys have children. So uh, you all know what it's like to be expecting and waiting for a child and the excitement and building everything to change and, and be suitable for the child as they come in, right? And in like manner, God saw this for us and for Adam and for Eve. He created the world the way that he did uh, in such a way so that when they got here, they could enjoy it to the foot, okay? So let's move forward. Boom. All right. Then God said, let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to celebrate the day from the night. And they shall serve as signs and for seasons and for days and years. And they shall uh, serve as lights in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. He made the stars also. God placed them in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth and to govern the day and the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning a fourth day. All right, so as we look, we see something different now. Now God creates the sun and the moon, right, to govern the day and govern the night, okay? Um, he creates these things and put them in their, their place, and he says that they are to serve as signs and for seasons and for days and years, right? So again, God created these two things for a purpose, right? So for us, to recognize what a full day looks like. Um, and when a new day comes, he allowed the sun and the moon to be in their perspective places. But not only that, the rotation of the earth now is coming to place, right? The earth has to rotate in order for the sun to rise and you know the sun to uh, come up, right? For us, with that happening, we can recognize when it's day and when it's night. We know, right? And again, God has created an order for that. And he's put the stars in the sky, right? For extra light as well for us to see at night. God is incredible with how he's put all this stuff together. It's ingenious. Again, and they shall serve as lights in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth. And it was so. God made the, two, the greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. He made the stars also. God placed them in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth and to govern the day and the night and to separate the light from the darkness and God saw that it was good okay so again we're looking at the order of creation we're looking at how God came and water was already here okay and and when the water was already here the earth was already here but it had no shape it had no form but God created a purpose and it's amazing how God can take nothing <laughs> absolutely nothing things that have no value and he can do something with it in such a way that he gives it a value that supersedes what you and i could ever think and he does the same thing with our lives you know we we ruin ourselves we make terrible decisions and so much so that we often have people walk away from us in this life because of the things that we say and that we do and how we ruin relationships you know but God is so cold that God says, I love you. And not only do I love you, but I also want to do something with you. It's not over for you yet. And so God takes us. He, he makes something out of us whenever we come to him and we submit our lives to his lordship. Whenever we submit our lives to him and, and decide to, to live for him and allow him to live his life through us. He gives us purpose and he allows us to be able to do more than we ever could on our own uh, and it makes a huge difference, not just for time, but also for eternity. And this is what we're looking at as we're looking at the first four days of creation, okay? And 
I know that might be short, but that's it for today. This is where we're stopping. Uh, we're going to pick up again um, next week, and we're going to spill into chapter two, and we're going to spill into uh, finish up the rest of chapter one. All right. So questions, thoughts, comments, criticisms, anything for our first day in Genesis. Did you learn something new today? I sure did. Yeah, absolutely. Wear it up. Talk to me. I'm listening. Give me some feedback. Yeah, I'm still thinking about the the, the, the third heaven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, third heaven, something else. What about you, Sheree? I'm listening. Talk to me. Um, uh, it's just kind of something that I observed. It's not necessarily something. Um, but you know, the the Bible says that the evening and the night was the next day. I'm just trying to figure out how we flipped it and made morning. You know, what we determined a day. Yes. You know what? That's a great question. I have no idea. <laughs> I have absolutely no idea. Um, but I mean, it's something that we could research and look up. Um, but it's just crazy to me to just think about that. I think about, um, you know, when when we see that space wasn't even invented yet, but God stepped out of eternity. And, and created something. It makes me think about the uh, great white throne judgment and how the Bible says that um, a great white throne will appear out of nowhere. And then when it does, how the heavens and the earth will flee from the face of the one who sits on the throne, right? And if there's no heavens, right? And there's no earth, what is there? You know, it's like God has rewind. He he rewinded creation and just you know made it just separate. And now we're in this space. And we don't know what this space is. You know, it, it's it's wild to me to, to look at that and think about that. What's the name? What do we call this this particular area, this place, um, <laughs> where there is no sky or there is no no ground to stand? On? Um, again, it's it's just a trip to think about the. Of God and then the, the limitless power of God and his imagination. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr. Hall still there with you? Yes and no. He's kind of helping me get the kids together for bed. Okay, okay. Cool. Well, look, man, we'll pray it up today and um we'll 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 definitely catch up. I'll see y'all Sunday for sure. I'm off this weekend. Thank the Lord. So um yeah, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Awesome. Father God, we thank you so much uh, just for the tidbits that you've allowed us to be able to share in this short Bible study. Um, we pray for more understanding, Lord God. Uh, we pray that you just continue to spark our, um, our holy imagination, Father God. Uh, help us to just to continue to be in awe of you. Lord, your power knows no limits. And Lord, our minds simply cannot handle uh, the things that uh, make you who you are. <laughs> but Lord, it, it's surely good to be in a relationship with the God who can take care of everything, who, who can only speak and, and things can happen. Not even doing anything with your hands or flexing any muscles about the God, but by simply speaking, you make things a reality. Lord God, we don't take that for granted. I pray, Lord, that when times get hard, we remember you. And we just simply remember Genesis 1 and how you can make anything happen simply by speaking the word. We pray that we can run to you and rely on you and trust that same power that has not only uh, created everything, but has held everything together by that same power that you spoke and initiated, Master. We just love you. We just thank you for being the God that you are. We thank you for motivating us and encouraging us and blowing our minds as you always do over and over again. I just thank you for everything. Thank you for your love, for your compassion, your grace, and your mercy. And we look forward to seeing you one day face to face. Uh, until then, Father God, we'll continue pressing on in your word and doing our best to be faithful. These are our blessings we ask of you in Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right.
All right, y'all. If y'all need me, y'all know the number. Definitely much love to you. Huh? Thank you very much. I enjoyed the lesson. Thank you. <laughs> For sure. Not a problem, man. Look forward to seeing y'all next time. Absolutely. Thank you, Brad. Sure. All right, Drew. <laughs> and Jay how I'm going to you, bro, bro. He's in and out. I'm sorry. <laughs> you can deliver the message for me. <laughs> <laughs> right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.